Well, I'm here on the Angus River in uh, Strathalbyn and uh, I just thought I'd, I'd say welcome to those who are joining us for the first time here at uh, Burnside City and our online worship and those who have been joining us for uh, for all the months that we've been doing uh, these these worship services. And uh, it's it's great to, to know that you're around and uh, please, if you're, if you're new, please uh, email us and, and we'd love to say hello to you um, and get in touch. Today we're going to continue our, our, our series looking at worship and uh, particularly looking at generations in worship and uh, worshipping all ages. And I thought I'd start with something from Ephesians chapter 3, the end of chapter 3. It says that, can you see there? Now to him who is able to, to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. To him be the glory. Worship is about giving God the glory. And in all the generations. You notice that? It doesn't say just, just the young people or just the old people. or uh, It says all generations. So I hope that in this service here uh, that you will be able to join with all the generations in praising God, giving God the glory in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, Lloyd. Hi. Hey, it's good to see you. It was uh, when we first joined the church here, we had been attending Beaumont Uniting Church. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't know anyone down this end of town, sort of thing. <laughs> um, so I was wondering how I would get my wife to know people from the other churches. She was in a, a wheelchair and not able to mix very well uh, with the congregation. So I devised a plan of inviting people home to have afternoon tea on a Friday afternoon and invite people from the other churches that we hadn't attended. So that was very good and the people were were lovely and we got to know the people in the, from the other churches mm. very quickly. So we must watch out for new people that come to our church, make sure that if they're disabled or anything that we do make the effort of talking with them. Yeah. Well, we'd been going to church since yeah. we were kids. Yeah. Uh, and we'd been to Glenunga Church for a, quite a number of years. Yeah. Then we came to Beaumont when our children, when Geoffrey was um, four, I think, yeah. and the other one was two. And uh, so, but our time was taken up in, in uh, Sunday school teaching and youth groups and so forth, mm. so that um, we didn't get down this end of town. Yeah. So uh, it was great yeah. and a very quick way to get to know people. Mm. So, and I would say if you are newish to the church, take the initiative of getting to know others as well. Yes. Uh, don't, don't wait for them to come and for others to come to reach you, but maybe you can reach out to you them. You can reach out to others. Yeah. So what's worship mean to you? How? Well, if I don't come on a Sunday, I feel very miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Sunday's an awful day without church mm. Mm. to me. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's, it means a great deal for me. And why do you think that is? Well, I don't know. Uh, my grandparents always went to church. Yeah. Um, my grandfather was very deaf. Yeah. He couldn't hear people very well. And uh, he used to every Sunday he would go to church and somebody said to him one day why do you go to church you can't hear anything why do you go and he said to set the example so that's what we must all do is to set the example for others to follow excellent all right thank you Lloyd uh, bless you and we'll see you here at church won't we <laughs> <laughs> all right See you.
So we've been talking about worship for the last few weeks. And uh, some of you may be thinking, hang on, this is a pretty anxious place right now. We're feeling pretty anxious about lots of things, which is why we did that Psalm 23 series. Um, but why are we talking about worship? Well, if you think about the up and the in and the out, uh, for those who've been around Burnside City for the last couple of years, you may know what I'm talking about. But uh, it's, it's great to think of a, a triangle uh, when it comes to, to our Christian faith. There's an up element, which is connecting with God. And as we look up to God, we actually see ourselves, the in, we see ourselves differently. Uh, re, reshaped, re, re-imaged, uh, refreshed in light of who God is, in light of the Trinity. And once we see ourselves in light of who God is, uh, then we're actually energized to, to see the world as God sees it and to go out into the world to be the hands and the feet of Christ and to, uh, to, to be that love in, that God has for us out in the world. So if we want to see ourselves differently and to have a, a, a better perspective on, on these challenges and, these, and what we're going through right now, then worship is essential. The up element is essential for our lives to have a, a better perspective on our, on our in and also our out and about this world that we're living in right now. So that's why we're talking about worship, the up element. You may be thinking, well, you know, church worship, it's kind of dry. It's kind of boring. It's kind of irrelevant. It makes me want to go to sleep sometimes. Well, when I think of worship, it should be full of abundant life. It should make us feel even more alive than we do already. It should recharge our batteries. It should help us go, this is what I was born to do. It helps us give God the glory and focus on something other than ourselves. Worship should be abundant and full. So what's it look like? Well, so I think we were actually born to worship uh, that God created human beings, in fact, all creatures to worship. And as human beings, we've got the freedom, the free choice to worship God, the Trinity, or or worship something else. But whatever we're doing in our lives, we are giving worth to something. And as uh, we're getting ourselves out of this this time of um, of social isolation, and we're starting to to take on other things from the world, I wonder what you're taking on. I wonder what you're spending your life doing. Show me your timetable uh, and what you spend your life doing, and I could tell you what you worship. That's what uh, what I've heard from other people, and I think I think there's some truth in that. So, we were born to worship. And worship something. Someone asked Jesus, what is the most important commandment? What's the most important thing to do with your life? Now, as a, as a new Christian or, or someone who was just discovering faith for the first time, I remember reading this in the Bible and thinking this is a great question. And this actually, the answer that Jesus gave helped me become a Christian for the first time. His answer was this, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength, basically everything that you have, and to love others as much as you love yourself. When it comes to worship, the up, that's about love, loving God with all that we have. We can think about it in terms of the five different love languages. So Chapman, uh, a... um, Someone who was writing about what love means, and he, he discovered that there's, there's five different love languages that people have. There's quality time. There's acts of service. So that's doing something for someone else. There's physical touch, hugs, that kind of thing. And there's also giving gifts. When it comes to loving God with all that we have and our worship, we can think of those five things, those five love languages. Quality time, well, that's actually what you're doing now. Spending some time away from what you would normally do in a day and going, no, I'm going to worship God and uh, spend this time reflecting on who you are and giving my worth to you. Acts of service. Well, actually, this is something that I'm not talking about too much in worship, in this worship series. But 
you know, if you look through some of the uh, Isaiah, particularly if you go the, the, the first bit of Isaiah, for example, but a whole lot of the prophets, they had a real challenge to the Israelite people who were worshiping God by giving all these sacrifices and burning all these, uh, all their, their, um, their bulls and a whole lot of other and sheep and all these doing all these sacrifices to God, but actually not living a a life that God wants them to live. And He says, says in, in some of these uh, some of these prophets say, you know, your sacrifices that you burn, are the, they they smell putrid to me. God is saying, they don't smell nice at all. I can't stand the smell of them. I would rather that you look after the widows, look after the poor, do acts of service. Then we might uh, use another love language to worship God, which is uh, gifts. So that's our talents, our skills, our abilities, but also our finances. And, um, and that's, that's been a very traditional way of worshiping uh, from the, the Old Testament all the way through. And then also the fifth one, which I haven't mentioned yet, which is words of affirmation. So we might love with words of affirmation. I love you. That kind of stuff, which is why we sing songs of praise God with our words, uh, with our, with, uh, like we do a lot of that in our, our worship service. But ideally, our worship service has all five of those elements, those love languages. At Burnside City, we would love to have worship that is Trinitarian. That, that means loving God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Worship that's joyfully vibrant. Worship that is humbly giving God our best. And finally, worship that is creatively encouraging faith at every age and every stage. I'll say that again. Creatively encouraging faith at every age and every stage. A stage of faith. I wonder if you've been thinking in these recent weeks about what worship, what, what the Bible actually says about worship. There's no great specifics actually about worship. The Old Testament, it was mostly priestly kind of worship at the temple. Uh, we towards the but towards Jesus' times, you started to get synagogue worship at the synagogue as well, and we actually have this picture of Jesus in the synagogue, and he gets up and he starts reading from a scroll, the scroll of Isaiah, and starts to uh, starts to talk about it and, and refers to himself in it. We also get some pictures from the New Testament church about different sorts of way uh, that churches is that. Uh, Worship is, is ordered and there's some songs, there's some prayers, there's, um, there's some message, there's some time of encouragement and there's, uh, there's teachings from the, the disciples. Uh, there's also this, this uh, feast that happens that they're talking about in the Corinthian church. And it says that they met regularly. A lot of the early Christian church worship was actually, in the end, but based a lot on, on uh, what happened at the synagogue. We also have these other expressions, these very creative expressions of worship throughout the Jewish Testament. So the, in the Old Testament, the way that the Jews would worship, not just in the temple, but in these Jewish festivals, which is why I'm sitting here at a table, the dinner table. One of those Jewish festivals was the Passover, which was a big family feast. And at this family feast, they would remember, and they would have to celebrate it each year, they would remember what God did when he redeemed the Israelite people from slavery in, the, in, the, uh, in Egypt and set the captives free. And this sense that God is, has done it in the past and he'll do it in the future. Jesus celebrated this Passover meal. But you think about this, this Passover meal is actually an all ages worship experience. It engages all the senses. It's got food, it's got lamb, it's got bitter herbs, it's got salt water, which remembers the tears that were shed. It's got uh, kids and the grandkids, uh, not, and also the, the grandparents. It's got all generations sitting down, worshiping God together and remembering what God has done, saying prayers. In fact, one of the things that would happen at uh, the Passover meal is uh, there would be four questions that 
uh, so this happens at the, the uh, typical Jewish Passover today, is uh, these four questions, and the youngest person on that table would ask these four questions. So I've got Cameron to answer two of those questions right now for us. How is this night different from all other nights? On all other nights, we eat all vegetables. Why on this night, maror, bit, or bitter herbs? So that's a couple of questions there. The one about bitter herbs, and which is which is it. So think about that that worship experience where it's being talked about, but also you can taste it, you can uh, experience it, and you're remembering what's going on. There's another great worship experience that uh, you, you can see in the New Testament in Jesus times and that's the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem for the, for the last time. Uh, he's about to have his, his last week before he dies on the cross for us and then he's reborn and he's uh, resurrected in this amazing way. Uh, but as he's coming in uh, we, we talk about it as if it's uh, we, we use the word Palm Sunday. Uh, because as he came in, people were, were saying these, these uh, wonderful things to Jesus, uh, saying that here he comes, uh, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm going to get, uh, in a fairly creative kind of way, I'm going to get my family to tell this story. This is a story that, the, that they use for this Palm Sunday. But uh, we'll re get them to retell it right now. When they came near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples ahead of him. He said to them, go into the village ahead of you. Uh, you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them. That person will send them at once. This happened so that what the prophet said came true. Tell the people of Zion, your king is coming to you. He is gentle, riding on a donkey, on a colt, a young pack animal. The disciples did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their coats on them for Jesus to sit on. Oh, we don't have coats. Here, use this towel. Use this towel. That's a coat. That's your cloak. All right, put the towel over the top of the donkey so that Jesus can sit on him. Oh, that didn't work. That's okay. Shh. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. All right. They brought the donkey and the colt and the coat for them to Jesus to sit on. Okay, let's not squash the donkey, Jake. Oh, uh, Jesus. Okay, most of the people, uh, most of the people spread their coats on the road. Others cut branches, quick cut branches, and put them out and spread them out on the road in front of Jesus. Okay, look at all the crowd there. Look at the crowd. Look, there's a panda. Throw them out, camera. Just do it quick. Get all the branches and throw them out. Move along, quick. There's all the crowd. You just do it, Cammy. That's it. Move along. Well done. The crowd went ahead of them. Shh. The crowd went ahead of them. Uh, the crowd that went ahead of him and that followed was shouting. Cameron, you just say Hosanna. Shout out Hosanna. 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 Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna blessed is the, the blessed is the one, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. You say that, Cameron. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna. Good job. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, the whole city was in uproar. People were asking, who is this? You see that? No, you say, who is this? The crowd answered. Now you say, the crowd answered. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth. Well done. This is the word of the Lord. There's a few things uh, that the story that, that uh, Nicole and the kids told, which isn't quite uh they didn't quite finish the story if you were to read it in matthew chapter 21 after they said hosanna in the highest and jesus enters into jerusalem and i'm reading it here and the whole city was stirred and asked who is this and the crowds answered this is jesus the prophet from nazareth in galilee so it's interesting they're not quite worshiping jesus yet they're still not quite sure he's the son of god i'll get onto that in a moment it goes on, verse 12, this is in chapter 21. Jesus entered the temple area. Remember, the temple is where the Jews predominantly would worship God. 
he entered this temple area and he drove out all who were buying and selling there. So people would buy and sell some things. Uh, they would exchange stuff so that you could buy uh, something that you could sacrifice uh, for, for the various things that you wanted to sacrifice to God for. Um, and there would be money changing hands because there's lots of different sorts of money, but they would get temple money. And he, he comes in and he overturns the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It says this, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. He wasn't very happy with what was going on in the temple. He wasn't happy with that kind of worship where it was, it was all about exchanging money and, and greed, really. It should be a place of prayer. And then it goes on and he, he actually, once he clears out the temple, he starts to show what real worship is. He says, the blind and the lame came to him at the temple and guess what? He healed them. But the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things that he did and the children shouting in the temple area. So these were still shouting from just before, from uh, putting down the, the leaves there. And they're shouting, Hosanna to, son, to the son of David. These chief priests, they heard it and they were indignant. They didn't like it one little bit. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. He didn't say, oh, I don't like what you just did about overturning the tables. They were more upset about what the kids were doing, that the kids were worshipping Jesus. Were lifting him up, saying, Hosanna. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? And then he quotes from Psalm, uh, Psalm 8 verse 2. It says, have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. So uh, other, other versions say perfect praise, uh, perfect worship comes from the lips of children and infants. He goes and he says he left them, that's Jesus left them and went out to the city of Bethany where he spent the night. And that's where the story finishes. But I think it's worthwhile uh, looking at this a little bit more in terms of this, this all ages worship that's going on here. You've got whole lots of families, as I said, grandparents all the way through to little kids. And they start as they're coming in, they're putting cloaks down, uh, taking them off and they're putting them down on, uh, on the, the ground giving Jesus worth, putting him down. Oh, man, that's getting a bit caught here. All right. They're putting him down, giving him worth, and they're taking bits of trees, stripping them back and putting them down as well. And then also using their words, shouting, praising God, praising this one who comes in the name of the Lord, Jesus. All ages is doing it in a very, very different kind of way, a uh, very spontaneous way for a start, but also a very loud, exuberant uh, kind of way. But also it, it engages all the senses. There's the, the smell of the, the, the leaves and the, the branches that you've torn off, uh, the, the, the smell of the dust on the road and the horses going past and the, the cloaks there. There's a... Uh, uh, an experience of, of walking and probably as Jesus is coming in, the kids, you can, you can imagine them running along a little bit like you see in the, um, in the Tour de France. You get those riders that come, that come in and then, then you get those other, other guys running along to, to try and uh, catch up with, with, who, with, these, uh, with these riders. I can imagine that, the kids running alongside Jesus as he's coming past. It's a, it's a full-on experience of, of worship. It's not just words, is it? It's not just auditory. So we have an all-ages worship service. We've got engaging all the senses. A lot of the different love languages are being used. And then he comes in and he, he does this thing where he overturns the temple. And it's interesting. What, what were they calling him? Can you remember what they said? It said they called him the son of David. Now, who was the son of David? Well, that was Solomon. What did Solomon do? He built the temple, the temple where you would worship God. And he's just 
change things around. The, the temple leaders, those chief priests and teachers of the law, they're the ones that are giving him the hard time. And he's going, no nah, way, you don't understand what worship is. These kids have got it. You don't. And he's uh, saying, you've actually turned this house of prayer into a den of robbers. Jesus actually says at some point that uh, this temple will be destroyed and rebuilt in three days. He's saying that, that I'm going to be the temple, my body. Jesus Christ, when he dies and is risen again, his resurrected body is the temple. And he's actually starting this new temple of worship, which becomes the church. That's us today, right now. The church. He's starting a new generation of praise and worship. A new way of doing it. And here it is in this triumphal entry, in this all ages worship experience. I wonder, can you see some of those things that I said right at the start about creatively encouraging faith at every age and every stage. We'd love to do that here at Burnside City. I know that we do do it, but uh, do it even more. Creative. God is so creative. He, he created you and me. He created our hands. He created the stars in the sky, the, the plants next to us. <sighs> Amazingly creative. And he's given that gift to us. Uh, we are made in the, the image of God. We've been gifted with creativity. So if we're going to love God with all that we have, that means loving God with our creativity as well. Encouraging. Worship should be encouraging. Encouraging of our faith. Encouraging each other. It says in Acts 9.31 that the church started to grow because of a spirit of encouragement that was there. The Holy Spirit wants to give us this spirit of encouragement. Can we at Burnside City, with the help of the Spirit, strive not to just be a welcoming place, which I know we are, and we do it really well. Can we even be more than just welcoming, but encouraging of each other and newcomers? Encouraging faith growth at every age and every stage. There's uh, quite a lot in this Bible here uh, about the generations coming to worship God. Here is this experience here, this triumphal entry of Jesus coming in and you've got the kids and you've got everyone there worshiping God, worshiping Jesus. I think there's a, a beautiful picture of, of generations worshiping, worshiping God together as the church. Uh, and not to just be a, a church that focuses on one demographic, but, but all of us. Uh, and I think at Burnside City, our demographic of our church should reflect the demographic of our community, which means multicultural, all ages. And then finally, every stage, uh, worshipping every stage. What do I mean by that? You know, if you think about that triumphal entry, there would have been people that were just following along with the crowd going, you know, this is interesting. Here's this Jesus, heard a little bit about him. Or maybe uh, they've heard that he heals, uh, that he's done some remarkable things, that he's a great teacher. I'm interested. Uh, I'm going to follow along with the crowd and, and grab my branch too, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll join him. There would have been people who are kind of just really young at the faith and those who were who've been with Jesus, traveling with him, his disciples, for a very long time. And they would have heard his teachings, lived with him, uh, known what, he's, what he thinks. Uh, disciples still don't really always get it all the time. But by this stage, they had an inkling that this was the, the Son of God. I'm sure they get confused a little bit later on, just, just a, few, a few days later when he dies on the cross. They don't quite get it, but then when he's resurrected, and then explains it to him even more. Which I think just reminds us that there's always growth in our faith. But I would hope that at Burnside City, we can be a place which encourages faith 
whether you, you don't really know very much about Jesus at all, but you'd like to know a little bit more. You'd like to know about this God who loves you, who has a plan and a purpose for you, who, who can help lift you up and set you on a, on a solid foundation and help you walk. But also, it should be a place that uh, when we come to worship together, that it encourages those who have been worshipping for a long time, who know a lot about um, a retired minister of the congregation, should be able to lift up their praises to God in worship at, our, at uh, Burnside City. That's a picture of the future for us. Yes, we can see some of it right now, but I think that's where God is leading us to in the future as well. I love this idea of, of great crowds coming, praising Jesus, kids, adults, as Jesus enters, and he sticks up for the kids as well. He says, no, there, they've got it right. They're doing their worship well. Don't you give them a the hard time. Jesus, God, the Father, the Holy Spirit is worthy of our worship. It's worthy of our love. Let's love God with all that we have. The up as we are changed inside to go out into the world to, to show you what God's love is really like. To live out this new resurrection life, which is an offer for all of us. Let me say a prayer. Well, Jesus, thank you so much for, for who you are. Thank you that you are the healer, the, the one who changes the world upside down. As uh, You're the one who sticks up for the little person. I thought you lifted up these kids. And you did it actually time and time again too, Lord. Lord, uh, I think of those people who are watching this right now. Uh, some who imagine themselves in that crowd, and yeah, maybe they, maybe they they're still really new to all this. Holy Spirit, help them right now. Encourage their faith. Give them strength. Help them to to worship you. I also pray for those who who know you really really well as a, as like a their best friend. Oh Lord continue to grow their love. There is so much more to, to the love that you have that they need to understand, that they, can, that they can be gifted to understand and help them to love you back even more. Praise you for who you are. We thank you for the way that you see us. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus.